chilling in the Miami airport. Yay! Thirteen Hups members went to Virgin Gorda. The Ramseys, the Colliers, the McDonalds, the Babcocks, Bess, Monica, Dennis, Lance, and John. We stayed at Guava Berry Estates where we had private bungalows that each were named after a flower, which was appropriate because there were lots of pretty flowers on the island. Poor Dennis, Lance, and John, they had the bungalow at the top of the hill and unfortunately had no air conditioning. So hearts go out to them, they really stuck it through because it was mighty hot and humid there while we were there. Some of the group went on to St. Croix and then we met up with Henry. Dive VVI really made the trip at Virgin Gorda. They did an outstanding job. Um, they gave us two dive boats. We were uh, 13 folks and they split us in two dive boats and even throughout the week as some of us uh, had issues and ended up falling off, they still kept us on two dive boats even with just a few people on one boat which was great. Jeff and Casey and their whole crew, all the dive masters, everybody, they just went above and beyond. Um, they made sure we had breakfast arranged. Um, on the boat, we had real soft drinks, real drinks, real snacks on the boat. Um, really liked how they took us to different islands within the BVI for lunch opportunities to see the different locations there. So that was really cool.
us were pleasantly surprised at the variety of life that we saw underwater at Virgin Gorda. We saw large animals, small animals, um, sharks all the way to down to tiny fish. And seahorses. Um, it was really good variety of diving. Water visibility wasn't the best, and there were some dive spots that the coral wasn't the healthiest, but overall there was a lot of different critters that we were able to see, and we really enjoyed that. Quite a few of us were able to have some fun with a bunch of sail-thin blennies. They would generally chase each other and show their fins, so really some really good opportunities for photos and videos and, and just fun watching as well. the dive trips with Hubs not only gives you the opportunity to dive and really advance your skills with photography, but there's a social component too. We really have a lot of fun socializing with each other, meeting folks that maybe you just see in a Hubs meeting or, or maybe don't even talk to normally if they uh, aren't able to attend the meetings. But, you know, being out of your element, on vacation, and really around each other and really mix it up. You, you really enjoy each other's company on the hub strips. Some of you may recognize some of the footage from the Rhone from the movie called The Deep, starring Nick Nolte and Jacqueline Bassett, which was filmed on the Rhone. The Rhone sunk on October 29, 1867, killing 123 people. At the time, it was an innovative ship, it had a bronze propeller, which was only the second made of that alloy at the time, and still today is the second largest bronze propeller in the world. It also had a surface condenser that allowed water reuse in her boiler and steam engine. The condenser is very popular amongst schools of fish and provided some great photo ops while we were down there. 
The Rhone had a sister ship called the Conway that had drawn alongside at Peter Island for bunkering in early October. On the day of the storm, even though the barometer dropping was noticed, everyone thought hurricane season was over, seeing as it was the end of October. Therefore, the Rhone and the Conway remained at Peter Island. Withstanding the first half of the storm safely, although their anchors did drag, they feared being driven on shore after the eye had passed. So during the eye, they decided to pull up anchor, and they transferred passengers from the Conway to the Rhone, thinking the Rhone to be unsinkable, and the Rhone was going to head for open sea. As was normal practice at the time, the passengers were tied to their beds or locked in their rooms to prevent injuries to them during the storm. The Rhone was unable to make it to open sea and wrecked on Black Rock Point. The ship broke in two and the cold water from the sea made contact with the hot boilers causing an explosion. Only 23 passengers survived, all crew. The bodies of those who died were buried in a mass grave on Salt Island, which we were able to see as we left the dive site. The Rhone wasn't the only ship that sank that day from the Category 3 hurricane. It is said that there were at least 15 other ships that sank in that area. You can imagine all the personal effects that would have been floating around in the waters. At the time, the locals believed spirits stayed with people's personal effects and would haunt them afterwards if they kept them. After gathering up all the personal effects from the ocean, the only thing that they could think to do with them so that they wouldn't be haunted by the spirits was to send them back to the queen. Not understanding the locals' true motivation, the queen thought it was extremely benevolent of them and declared Salt Island a tax-free island. Anyone who lived on Salt Island would simply have to send one pound of salt back to the motherland once a year. This turned into a ceremonious occasion and continued up until the last inhabitants left the island in the 1980s. The story goes that one person, who is simply known as the Italian, escaped out of porthole number 27. If you rub the porthole three times in a clockwise direction, you'll be granted good luck and will revisit British Virgin Islands and the Rhone in the future. No, you guys are absolutely fantastic. It's been a, a joy so far. Uh, we'll see how everybody does on the next, uh, on one of my next favorite dives that, uh, that I have many of here in the BVI. Uh, but no, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's nice to not have to uh, corral people and leash them down, babysit them. So uh, it's a pleasure for us. Thank you so much. For, for <laughs>
Yay! How was it? Safe. We saw three sharks. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Thank you. Great day. Just doing drinks. He's trying to give me this food on the program. Okay. <laughs> the uh, the diving is is just a portion. Yeah, I'm interested in diving and photog underwater photography, but really, it's the people and being someplace I've never been, and then the diving. I remember coming up after diving the night dive on the Rhone and I felt as excited and giddy as a little kid. It was such an awesome dive, so much to see, very exciting. And then to top it off, our dive master had made us homemade cupcakes that were nice and warm for us as we were drying off. The dive team was just excellent. The dive shop and, and the whole crew really made, uh, made the adventure and had excellent attention to detail and all the little things really went above and beyond. I know this was supposed to be a dive trip primarily, but I think my most memorable takeaway from the whole trip was the time I spent climbing around on the boulders and in the boulders and caves at both a place called the Baths and just on our little local beach uh, next to our place we stayed. That was fun, unique, um, very memorable to me.
Jeff and Casey and their whole crew hosted a beach barbecue on Thursday night before we left and that was a lot of fun and really good food and they cooked it all up themselves and it was just really, really fun. They were a lot of fun to get along with and talk to and share stories. Uh, really, really made the trip and really made it feel like at home. The real special folks. I took one afternoon off of diving and walked around the town of Christian Set in St. St. Croix and actually got to learn quite a bit about the history. St. Croix has been owned by seven different countries in its history. Spain, Netherlands, Malta, Great Britain, France, Denmark, and the U.S. And the longest duration under a single country was Denmark for 200 years. In 1917, Denmark sold St. Croix, St. Thomas, and St. John to the U.S. for $25 million in gold. The other thing I thought was interesting is there's a lot of existing buildings still uh, that have a lot of relation with the um, slave trade. The Danish West Indian and Guinea Company was a private, royally chartered slave trading company with a monopoly on the importation of slaves into the Danish West Indies. Slave auctions were held within the warehouse that still stands there today uh, until 1803 when Denmark halted its African slave trade. And then when we went over to Frederiksted uh, for the pier, a little bit about Frederiksted, the locals often call it the Freedom City because uh, it is a town where the site of the emancipation of the slaves occurred on July 3rd, 1848. My favorite part of diving is the scavenger hunt. Always on the lookout for new species I haven't seen or species that I just don't have that perfect picture for. And in St. Croix, the Frederickstead Pier provided that awesome opportunity. And the other part that's exciting is when you find something on your own, um, not having to have somebody point it out to you. And I found a frogfish all by myself, and that was so exciting. There were so many fish and critters that I've never seen before that I was able to see uh, at the pier, the jackknife fish, high hat, um, tons of juvenile smooth trunk fish, box crab, schools of scad, a slate pencil urchin, squat urchin shrimp, white nose pipefish, tons of things that I hadn't seen, and even a lot of things that I've seen that are rare. saw never-ending amounts of seahorses and frogfish and it was really exciting.
When the little blue bird who has never said a word starts to sing. Mothballs and chimpanzees in the 